definitely how deep some of these mounds are. Why have I lost the engineer? It's weird. Yeah, I got about an eight meter altitude right now. I gotta come up. Okay. I'll Can give I get you the, the other salvo? Yep. Starting to, uh, I'm starting to pull you. Okay. Let's see if we can holster that, and then you're gonna have to come up, come down. I'll come back down to give us a little more leash. Get it started now. Just let it go. There you go. Perfect. Yep. Just give it a little up to nice the top. All right. Nice core. I'm going to swing my heading back to face the same way as Herc so that I give us a little more, uh, a little more tether. Back towards Herc. I think we should be settling out soon, but. <sighs> Track. Okay, I'm gonna close the drawer. We're fine. We're good. I'm yeah. good. I give you some tether by turning back around. I'm gonna close okay. the drawer. Go for it. And I'll give you the dive salvo. Sounds good. Sample tray in. It's pretty. It's pretty solid. Um, Pavement, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start to come up a little bit. But yeah, the, these are, the, you know, it, it's pretty obvious from how deep the core goes that it was really just, you know, these are just mounds on top of the slope. They're not depressions underneath. It's just very strange. I mean, it must be a pretty sluggish current environment to have these perfectly circular. Um, so I'm staying on the I'm sediment on the mounds. It's really heading. fine stuff. Still. Hello, hello. Oh hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this could be one of those southwest side features. I know. We are approaching a watch change, uh, so give us a couple of minutes while we switch over to the next watch. Josh, could you Thanks show for me following the along arm as well? Twelve to four. Sort of left it in an awkward spot and didn't turn it off, just to get moving. Yeah, classic. Take a core.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 4 p.m. watch. This is the fourth dive of the Lu'ua'ea Ahiki Ke Kualono Kai expedition. We are exploring unnamed seamount D. Hey, Science Row, what are these little swipies? These little 20 centimeter wide, like, vertical wipe things. Give us the science lowdown. Um, are they still transitioning? Oh, I don't know. Well, that's one word for it. Yo. Hello? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Got a question for you. Sorry, I was shaming myself. That makes sense. <laughs> shaming yourself. So what are these uh, swipey bits? What swipey bits? These like 20 centimeter wide swipey bits. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, someone was down here with their broom trying to clean up the sediment. And like, uh, <laughs> well, you know, if it was like a like snail trail, it would be like rounded, but it's like yeah, no, it looks it looks like uh, like broom swipes. That's I think weird. the scientific name for it is swipey wipey. That's what I said, said, swipey wipey. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah, swipey wipey. Um, why is the ground so like like w we've seen like lots of lumpy, rocky sediment. We've seen sandy looking sediment, but this is like flat sediment you know i wanted to say the word shale it's not shale but you know it's like very very flat yes we're messing with tech stuff oh no oh good yeah wrong button uh let me come do it No care, no concern. You can do what they were doing if it was working. Oh. Okay. Ready to go. He's doing system checks, but I can do that in parallel. Check that system. Yeah, check that. The row. Wow. Okay. Apparently the interest for the swipey wipies is <laughs> We're driving. having some tech issues back here. That's fine. I was having system checks up here anyway, so all good. Is it go? Good. Okay. Well, I don't know any biological reason why uh, there might be somebody swipey wiping the seafloor like that. So strange, very regular squared off occurrences aren't generally observed in nature so that, that is a very very strange observation this is the first time this seamount has ever been explored to our knowledge so uh, it's unlikely that that was human made in any way um, unless someone is here that never said they were going to be here I don't know we were in the middle of the uh, talking about the dive plan when we were sidetracked by the spipy wipies. You know, uh, I said that we were on Seamount D. It's about as far as I got. All right, yeah, so we are on Seamount D of a chain of unnamed seamounts with one named seamount, the Chautauqua Seamount. And this is your dive watch lead um, speaking, Megan Putz from the University of Hawaii. Let's go around the room and introduce ourselves now that we're settled and have observed a really interesting phenomenon. In the background here, I'm Abrian Currington. I am your science communication fellow for this watch. Can you zoomed in a sec? What's, what's this thing up here? Nothing. Okay, never mind. You uh, can come wide. Science communication fellow by sea. By land, I'm a professional illustrator and cartographer. 
And to my right. Hello, my name is Coralie Rodriguez. I'm a student at the Graduate School of Oceanography at the University of Rhode Island. And then in our front row, we have our fantastic ROV team. Trevor, Herc. Antonella, Argus. Aaron Nav. Aaron Video. Thanks for introducing yourselves, and we are excited to get started on this 4 to 8 watch. Coralie, are you good to explain why the uh, substrate here might be a little flatter than, rather than the uh, pillowy bits that we were seeing before? Uh, sorry, I haven't seen anything yet. I mean, right here, like literally. I know, <laughs> but my computer is confusing me. So you're not good yet. It's okay. You don't have to be good yet. But I, I can I can tell you guys that... Is there any interest in broken off crust? Apparently this crust breaks. Okay, wait. I can tell you that it's okay. most oh, likely it's because of how the basalt was uh, deposited. So it was deposited in a different way. So it probably has something to do with the cooling. Well, Herc's just cracking off pieces of crust here. You want some? Uh... <laughs> I'm good, thanks, though. Okay. Yeah, like we just offered you a cookie. This is a biological sample from the deep sea. And yeah, not biological, geological. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a weird biological sample. It's hey, not Hey, you living. know what? <laughs> I'm sure that it's full of biology, microbiology. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, like cookies, true. sometimes you don't want anything too crispy. <laughs> this full cookie has already crumbled. Goo. I did not have those cookies. But I did hear that they were crispy. Not that there's anything wrong with crispy cookies. Uh, mm. I like a nice balance. Crispy on the outer edge and yet a little soft on the inside. Oh, just we got a jellyfish. Oh, a jelly jelly. Yeah. And focus. Background still having a technical crash back here. All right. Oh, this might be one of those uh, siphonophores, the anchors on the seafloor. Yep, this is a type of siphonophore and you see these little tendrils coming off of it. It uses those to uh, feed and also has some other little anchors that are attaching it to the seafloor. No, so around, people buddy. call this the, the dandelion um, siphonophore. I've tried to collect one of these before but uh, they kind of just break up into all their little component pieces. So let's just really enjoy this awesome view. Because of the change of pressure? Oh, no, they just decide found for is with a, a little bit of uh, movement of the water, kind of just uh, break up. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, they're very fragile. It's hard to recover them in one piece, but they're really cool.
So we are currently at a depth of 3,689 meters, making our way along a ridge of this seamount. And uh, the sediment down here is nice and brown and sticky. I think earlier we tried to collect some core samples of these little sediment mounds. But I think as we make our way up, we'll find that there's less and less of this sediment. But that would be an interesting observation. And while it looks like there isn't a lot around here, um, mainly due to the, the sediment, I think a lot of the corals would find that it would be really hard to live in this area right as it is. How, how much sediment is on the surface could get caught in their branches and make it really unpleasant. So that's probably why we're not seeing any corals and sponges right now. But there are probably more things to see here than we're seeing with our eyes right now. Um, if we were able to zoom into sediment, I'm sure it's teeming with life. Oh, do you want to? I want to. Just zoom right into the sediment? Yeah, I do. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Can you put her into microscope mode? All right, Aaron, mode? go ahead and zoom. Microscope mode. Oh, where is he going? Oh, those little shinies. Oh, yeah, there's little, there's little somethings. What are the tiny, tiny white dots? Not the two off to the left, but like a hundred throughout. Um, uh, I'm not sure. You got any more zoom there, Aaron? That's all she wrote. Yeah, I'm not sure what those little little white dots are. Okay, come wide, please. A little I saw, star there. Yeah, it's a little brittle star. This is like a great place for little brittle stars. I would think we'd see more cucumbers in an area like this. Oops, what am I doing? I believe there was one like swimming around about an hour ago. Yeah, I think I saw a cucumber poop. Poop bumper. Yeah, they they just leave sediment coils in their wake. There's a little red shrimp. shrimp. Whoop. Whoop, whoop. Got a question. Are all the seamounts the same age? All the seamounts in this chain? We don't know how old one of them is, so... Uh, I, I would assume that because of how seamounts form, right, Coralie? Like, there would be, like, a progression of ages, but... Yeah, there might be, but they also could have formed at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of different in things second. that can move them into place. I would assume there are different ages, but who knows? Bonk. It's cool seeing the broken off pieces, the orangey brown poking out underneath. Oh, there's a big mound. I think it's really interesting how the sediment is just mounded in these low, like random spots. Yeah, what's the story on that? Why I, would it do something like that? I am not sure. I mean... Hey, more of those swipey wipeys. Yeah, there's more swipey wipeys. Hmm. Aaron, um, 
the summit is supposed to be 1785, right? You're asking what the depth is supposed to be? Yeah, for the summit. Um, let me double check. What are you? Oh, look at that. I think that is a cucumber. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Check it out. Yeah, I mean, that was the, the point that Adam picked. I don't know if it was the exact summit. I can double check that if hey, you're zoom interested. In, no, that's fine. Thanks. Yep. Look at the little legs. So, so this is um, a sea pig. You see its little little feet. It's not the sea pig, um, but it is related to the sea pig. And this one is called um, Penny Agony. And it Sounds has awful. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I is, didn't name it. I don't know. This is like Bizarro World. The first two things I saw, I've never seen before. It's gotten a little, it's decided to give up on uh, feeding and, and try to float away Bye. in a desperate attempt to escape us. Good thinking. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> it kind of looked like a glob filled with water. Yeah, it did, didn't it? <laughs> it kind of did. Yeah, that's really funny. I hadn't realized that. Yeah, I think we collected one of those, um, I think, on our first dive of this expedition. How did it survive the... Ascent. Oh, it survived really well. It really? was in great condition, yeah. And what would make the difference between that kind of sea pig and a sea cucumber that does not survive? Yeah, if some of the sea cucumbers are like really gelatinous and like that one, the paniagony, just, I don't know, has thicker skin or something. And Interesting. They, they just stayed more rigid. Oh, there you can see a little, little uh, sea cucumber trails. There are other animals that make trails like that too. Um, the acorn worms will will make trails, and that would be a cool thing we might see down here is an acorn worm. I don't think they've been uh, very well characterized in the Pacific Ocean, so let's keep our eyes peeled for one of those. Um, in terms of the mounds, if they are bio biologically created. Uh, it could be an animal that is making these mounds. Now, if it was an animal making the mound, you would likely see a hole right in the center. Um, some worms will like to, to live in those holes, and they will, they will send out a proboscis to feed. But I don't see any holes in these mounds, so... What's this little midwater floaty? Yeah, Usually been in the midwater floaty. Yeah, it's like a little, little polychaete. Oh, brown on brown. Good luck, Aaron. Might be a swimmer. Far away. Good luck, Trevor. Or a floater. Uh, this one looks like a swimmer. See, it has those yeah. two yellow palps, those little antenna-looking things. That's all the zoom I've got. Yeah. That's all the stability I've got. So, <laughs> doomed for failure. <laughs> Good teamwork there. Yeah, that was pretty good. That, Nailed that's it. That's not an easy thing to do. I like floaty things. So Coralie, master of samples, um, <laughs> question from the chat. What stops us from just grabbing a sample of everything we can get our hands on? Space. <laughs> Space. The final frontier or otherwise? <laughs> all of the above uh there's not that much space so we have to be really uh like precise with the samples that we want to take and since i have a specific project in mind um that i know i have to get certain samples for i prefer to leave room for those rather than just grabbing everything which would be cool but unfeasible Yeah, rocks are heavy. Take up lots of space. <laughs> also, all of the rocks uh, go back to another uh, floaty thing. Yeah, our we'll line it up. like rock repository at URI, and um, okay, go it's ahead. it's so there's so many rocks that it's so hard to move the drawers. Whoa. So. <laughs> like overflowing with rocks but that if anyone needs so rocks small. you can uh 
contact us, send us an email, and we'll send you the rocks. Now, do you have to send the rocks back? Mm -hmm. If if you send me rocks, do yes, I have to give them back? Attempt. You do have to give them back. <laughs> on my oh. part, unfortunately. Try? Yep, let's go for it. That one is on the go. Oh, yeah. Oh, little, no. Little bristle worm. I got it, but it's still so small. <laughs> it's so small. <laughs> so small, so fast, and so far away. The trifecta. Uh, well, that All was right. garbage. <laughs> hey, now. I can say that because I was the one filming it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I there's do. a floating thing. There you go. Ooh, that cute nice Let's shrimp. Look at this nice, wow. stable nice cucumber. Nice purple sea yeah. cucumber. That's a full eggplant. Yeah. Go ahead and zoom on the eggplant. <laughs> a little overripe, perhaps. Yeah. Uh. Oh, is it going to swim? Oh, it's going to swim. <gasps> it's totally swimming. No way. No way. It's Dad, just thinking about on. it. Give me something more fun. I'm so this right looks now. like Galatheria. <laughs> it's letting go. Here we go. It's ready for its take crunch off. Yeah. take off. Swim. Swim. Or you can do it. Do it. Do it. Remember to activate the core. Not today. Peer oh. pressure is not working for this. No. Okay, bye. Core workouts are hard, you know. Ooh, are there any blue sea cucumbers? Blue? Um... Depends on your definition of blue. <laughs> uh, Actual blue. I've seen lots of shades of purple, um, but electric blue, I have not. Blue's on the rare side for nature, isn't it? Yeah, you don't see a lot of really true blue things. Blueberries? Blueberries are purple. Wow, no, blueberries are definitely blue. Well, okay, it depends uh, on the stage that you catch the blueberry in. not a real color. But <laughs> what? Purple's not a real color. No, that's uh, violet. No, violet's a real color. Purple's not a real color. Actually, Purple's made up in the human mind. My theory is that pink is not a real color. I you know. Just think it's I'm, light, you just think I'm messing red. with you, but you should actually look up that purple is not a real color. Yeah, no, I know what theory you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Colors are subject subjective to a degree. <laughs> I Unless you're going to Home yeah. Depot and picking out a very specific color and they color match. It doesn't matter because it still won't match when you get home. Yeah. <laughs> but what if you're just like, I just want it to be the sea cucumber purple. Ugh. Maybe for like an accent color. Uh, that could be very overwhelming. A very quick question with a very short answer. Is Coralie just the master of everything? Coralie literally has one job on this watch. <laughs> To give us geofax, no, two. Give us geofax catalog samples. And tell us which rocks to get. Can you zoom in on this black That's thing? That's geo. That's samples. That's a rock. That is a rock. That's a rock. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to sample it? You guys, we caught a rock. Um, why are some of the corals green? Is the question. Why are they green? Are there I some that are green? Coral? I don't know um, if I've seen one. I haven't seen any green ones. I've seen lots of yellow, different shades of yellow, uh, but I haven't seen any green coral, no. Uh, but yes, uh, the oh, question like goes on. Is what that a tuna for? Hey. It's a really long string. Oh, what is oh. going Whoa. on there? Oh, that's weird. That's very long. It goes forever. Oh my goodness. Can you zoom in on the squishy bit, please? Yep. Is that going into what? the sand? What is that? Oh my goodness. What is it? Oh no! Don't leave. Wait, what's? I it? don't. Is it I going don't, into the sand? I don't know what it is. <gasps> oh, it's a proboscis. Oh, it's it's going into that hole. Oh my gosh! That's a heck of a proboscis. Yeah. Wow. Look from, at it. It's going in. From what? You can zoom though? in again. Yeah. What is zoom it? In. Um, this this is um. Oh my goodness! I'm blinking. Oh my goodness! <gasps> I've never seen I've never seen this before. Whoa! What? Whoa! That's probably what the hole was from earlier. Ah. Yeah. So like the, the this is uh. the thing I was talking about that makes the mounds. That's very wow. cool. And it sends that out its proboscis. Cool. Um, they are in the Anelita. <laughs> Whoa! What? That was so weird. It's that like was a, wild. It's I've, like a sea gopher. I always like I knew <laughs> they had, yeah, I always knew they had these proboscises. Um, zero, zero. Could be like an echi urine. Um, they have those types of long proboscises. They are uh, 
in the uh, phylum Annelida, so they are a type of worm. Um, I think a peanut worm is That's there. a peanut worm? Yeah. Oh, cool. I've heard of those. That I was think. cute. Ooh, what's this? That's trash. Oh, <laughs> oh less no. exciting. It was like, oh, shiny. I know. Looks like a Pepsi can. That was a really long proboscis. How big is the animal that's in the hole? Um, it depends. Uh, they could be quite large, actually. What does it look like, the part that's in the hole? It looks kind of like a um, clear sack, like like a cucumber kind of shape, kind of long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and they usually make these um, holes that Sorry, are actually tube-shaped, like U-shaped burrows. Oh dear. So it looks kind of like a s s uh, sausage casing. Hmm. Yeah. What are you? Oh. Zoom in, please. Check Hello. you out. Oh, oh this is a blind cuskiel. So oh. this is one of those uh, cuskiels I was talking about uh, on earlier dives. This is Typhlonus nasus. So if it wasn't actively trying to swim away from us. Hey, come back. Um, You'd see its little nostrils. Oh my gosh. It has cute little nostrils. Oh. Oh. Hiding. I think we startled it. I guarantee we startled it. <laughs> it was like, it couldn't see us coming. The screaming vacuum, I think it heard us coming. Does it not have eyes or does it not have working eyes? doing stuff back there and yeah, we're troubleshooting again roger shoot that trouble uh the question is do you think the peanut worms are making the mount yes that's that was my theory earlier was that those those worms were making the mounds and but then i didn't see evidence. yeah and i didn't see any the ho any holes in the mounds because normally there's a hole where the, the proboscis comes out to feed and it'll just sort of swipe around and that's why you see like these really clean areas and you'll have these um like spoke trails because they'll send their proboscis out in one direction and bring it back and oh so it, those are the swipey bits the swipey bits oh. oh the swipey bits oh now we know yeah so like it'll it'll make these sort of like spoke trails place? around in the oh, sediment around where its little mound is but i i didn't see any holes in the mounds so I was like, well, maybe yeah, they're right. not made by these worms. Um, earlier, they did see a random hole, if they couldn't explain. Yeah, and uh, normally the mounds are paired. And uh, you'll have one mound, one, one side of the mound is like the, the front door. And then you have the other side of the mound is the back door. And they really? make these sort of U-shaped burrows. Wow. Oh, this has been an exciting start. Right? Yeah, that was super cool. Oh my goodness. Like, I've, I've read in books that it, that's a thing, and it has these proboscis, and, and I've seen a couple videos of the shallower water ones, but that was my first deep sea echiurin proboscis, and that was really cool. Um, and actually, someone in the chat earlier said, does it ever hurt leaving an area after you couldn't find the answer to an interesting phenomenon like the sediment deposit or the swipey bits? Well, sometimes we figure it all out yeah. all in one head. In, in half an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a productive half hour. <laughs> Some things Incredible. do haunt us forever, though. Yes. Like ghosts. Like ghosts. Yes. Okay. Putting back in a request for a jellyfish. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I'll work on that. Thanks. See if I bonk the pile, will the worm come out? <laughs> I was just so impressed with how long that proboscis was. It was so long. And so, like, not a lot of people have seen it swimming back into its hole, it seems like? Yeah, they usually, also, they, I do believe they move to new burrows every so often. You know, after a certain period of time, they've cleaned up 
all the area around their burrow. So they'll move to a new burrow and make, and so maybe some of these mounds that don't have holes are old burrows uh, that have been abandoned. Yeah, there was a question. Of, but yeah, oh, you usually sorry. don't see them on the surface. They're almost always buried. Wow. And one of the questions was asking, is there just like a big colony out here? But it could just be a couple worms that are moving around. Yeah, yeah. So there's probably quite a few of them just around in this area. Uh, but I wouldn't say that they're colonial in any way. Um, they live solitary lives doing their thing. Oh, there's like a this little tube that's a Ooh, tube. part of I'm gonna the Akiran home. Stop. It's very dusty around here. Yeah. Not much going back opportunities in this friable terrain. Oh, they're asking for the official name of the peanut worm. Sipuncula? Is that what that is? Uh, yeah, that's the peanut worm. Is yeah. it, I think the Cyponcula, and then there's the Echirins, which they all haven't. All the names of these things are really weird for common names. Um, spoon worms. Spoon oh. worm. Because they have that long proboscis that looks like a spoon. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Peanut, spoon. Peanut, spoon, food, almost dinner time. All right. Yeah, I think that one of the things that I picked up the most when uh, being a watch lead and, and doing this type of talking during dives is, is learning the common names for things because yeah. I'll just like shout out the the scientific name, and then people will be like, "Oh, I, okay, sure, Megan, whatever you say." So I've been working on learning my common names. I'm over here like, "Is can you say that in a way that I can Google?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, how do you spell that? I'm working on my my spelling out loud. Is that um, a little urchin? Where? Could be right. Could be. Uh, bottom rightish. Oh, the yellowy kind of guy. Is it yellowy? Uh, I'm, I'm, I might be looking at something else. This thing? Oh, yeah. I see. Up to the right. Uh, well, now it's up. Oh, there it is. This thing. Zoom in. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Oh. Hmm. Do you want to collect that? Yep. Come wide, please. Okay. Um, Are we suctioning it? Okay. I'll yeah. go for it. Let's get a good zoom before we section it, though, if we can. E yep. You can take bubble. Okay, thank you. Oh, the science chat basically answered all the questions already. <laughs> Should look at the science chat more often. Give it a second and it'll clear. Yeah, yeah, this segment takes a, a little of bit of time. There we go. It's clear enough. Uh, All right, we should go. Come wide, please. Okay. Why? Don't mind me arguing. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, the right button. It's a great way to put it. It is a weird rear spinny mode. Some, there's no cliff or anything, so it's not so not so dangerous. Yeah. It's gonna go into jar one. Jar one. Jar one. Okay. I usually go for the hockey puck, yeah, but you can do either one. 
It won't stay out halfway. Got to grab it from stowed. You got it. And you ask for zooms as you want them. Yep. Ready for suction? Yes. Really stuck there. Very rigid spikes. Okay, we have to put them in a box. Is that okay? Yep, that's Come fine. Wide, please. Bio box, alpha or beta is open. Either one. That's front. Yep. Take okay. your choosing. I'm gonna just open that right now. So you're gonna have to get it there with a the wrist rotate. Oh, it's actually going up. Never mind. Oh. Just kidding. Don't you point that at me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is it going to go all the way through, though? Oh, yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Hopefully Great it work. still has some spines attached. I think it does. Oh, yeah. It does. Yeah, it looks like okay. it Yeah. It's doing okay. Cool. Um, my guess right. I'm moving. for genus on that, that was, is uh, zero Capro Sideris. I'm sorry, can you repeat the sample number? That was uh, 078. 078, thank you. Yep. Back to the chatter urchin's edible. Yeah, you can eat a sea urchin. Yeah, usually when you eat the sea urchin, you're eating their uh, gonads. Hmm. Yeah. That's a fun fact. Fun fact. Yeah, they they're supposed to be, they're very awful. like creamy and, and uh, yellow. And uh, they categorize them by texture and color. I will say it's not a flavor for everyone. It's definitely not something for everyone. Okay. Yep. Bridge now, can we get five zero meters, one zero zero? Yes, sir. Um, uh, on trash, is seeing human trash a common thing? Somewhat. Depends on how high traffic their area is. Yeah, when we're closer to shore, we see a lot more trash. Um, you'll see things like uh, cups. Um, you'll see all sorts of bottles and cans. Uh, saw a toilet once. That was interesting. Whoa. A whole yeah. toilet? A whole toilet. That must have like fallen off of a something, or maybe like got drugged out by a storm. Uh, could be, or it just could be. Um, Back in the day, people would use the ocean as a trash can. So I know, but hauling a toilet, though? I mean, that's dedication. Um, they the well, off Jim's the throne. coast of uh, Honolulu, uh, they were getting rid of cars, was, whole cars. I was going to say, I've seen that on other islands where they just drive the cars off the cliff. Like, they'll put a rock on the thing and But you can the drive gas. that. Like, you can roll that. Like, toilets are super heavy. I mean, not as heavy as a car. But cars have wheels, though. Not all the cars had wheels. <laughs> <laughs> What's this white thing? It's a white thing. Is it's it an interesting white thing or just a white thing? Oh, it's interesting. Oh, everything's right. interesting. In the words of Megan Putz, everything's interesting. That's true. Can you run on the interesting thing, please? Level of interestingness of this white thing is it's a... Like a shell. Is it, is it like a molt from a 
squat lobster? Oh, it could be a molt from a squat lobster. Did they oh, you're oh. right. Oh, oh you got it. I saw that rostrum. That is the molt from a uh, video. Squat lobster <laughs> video for the win. First ID. One Whoa, point that is not video. my first ID. First, no, for, ID. first ID of a of a squat lobster molt feeding <laughs> the biologist out. I was gonna say I'm not that bad at ID. No, no, you're good at IDs. I'm, I'm just saying, like, it's your first ever ID. Right? <laughs> first ever ID of a non-living thing. I just got roasted. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I call it something, I'm wrong. So I yeah, want to so be like squat lobster. Like, no, it's a camp. Yeah, that was a Munidopsis <laughs> carapace, a type of squat lobster that we often see. So we'll likely see one of What's those the around here. Thing? There's something. Oh, there's there's the floating floating thing. Thing. There's oh. your jelly. There Should you go. Aww. Look at it's so cute. And Stay this with is me, neat. Jelly. Cause you see how in the middle ah. there's like that little red bit? That's the jelly's stomach and it has that red coloration so that if it eats anything bioluminescent, it doesn't get seen. Wow. So this is a um tricky medusa. I'll say. Oh that was so cute. <laughs> Um, uh. I've seen something like this before, but I, I'm not familiar with the ID for it. If only I brought my little uh, drawings of midwater animals, I might have had a, an ID. Oh, what Did are you these make like them little yourself? things? Yeah, uh, I was participating in a midwater um, transect dive, and I, every time someone would call out something, I'd try to sketch it really fast and uh, and make notes on what it was. That's what I'm doing over here. Although, yeah. <laughs> I just take a mental snapshot because I've got like six other things I'm having to do over here. Um, How far apart are the oh, two? Oh, there's another fish. So while there we're zooming is. in on this fish, uh, the dots are 10 centimeters apart. So when we get close to the fish, you'll be able to see if it's bigger or smaller than 10 centimeters. 10 meters apart. 10 centimeters. So uh, for people who like inches, that's Do approximately four. So this is another one of those blind cusk eels, Typhlonus nasus. I love them. It calls them nasus because uh, they got some big nostrils. So this fish does not have eyes, but I, I did spot some nostrils. So no eyes at all. It's not just unworking eyes. It's no eyes. It has no eyes. It'd be a bit of a waste of energy for eyes. Is yeah. that why they... They somehow lost their eyes um, in evolution. Yeah, and it looks like there might be a uh, parasitic copepod or isopod uh, on that the flank of that fish. So we sometimes see parasites on fish. And generally the parasites don't harm the fish because that wouldn't be advantageous to the parasite. Oh, what's that? Tiny fish. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Where? Oh, it went off the screen oh, to the I think, left. I think I will leave it behind. Ooh, how much weight can Herc pick up with its little claw arms? Little claw, you take that back. It's a uh, really it actually large is claw. a really large claw, <laughs> yeah. The is like seven is feet more tall. than you. More than me. Yeah, it better be. <laughs> Ooh, what's, Ooh that? what's that? Let's look at this. It can definitely lift up this squishy thing. <laughs> Zoom in, please. This is a siphonophore. This is one of the single bell siphonophores. Oops. So it has only one. Oh, and there's a cucumber. A really dirty sea cucumber. <laughs> Don't judge. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you've got to blend into your environment somehow. Yeah, so right here at the top is the, the swimming bell. So that is one zoid. And then you have the gastrozoids. Those are the colorful ones. And those are the feeding uh, zoids. And then there are also fish. the zoids that, oh, that might be the fish that we passed by coming back for its. Ooh. He's like, excuse me. Yeah, it's close up. It, he's really, he really is swimming right towards us. He's very far away, too. So small. What are you? Are you a juvenile a cusk eel or just a baby? Are, are you um, a liparid, oh. a, a snailfish? 
How are you? So interested in the ROV, hey buddy. Oh yeah, it's so little. Yeah, I think this is a, a juvenile cuskiel. All right, thanks. So I think we got a question on our watch this morning. Uh, why don't we see juvenile fish or, or young fish? Um, we do. There, there was one. Do 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 do. We got Kim Weaver in the chat. Hey, Kim. Uh, spoonworms. Does it land on a tiny bit of sediment as a juvenile and slowly grow in sediment pile over time? Um, Bridge that's down. a good theory. Five, I'm sure they, one, zero, at zero. some point uh, they are going to settle out just like almost all of the animals that we have here. They start as uh, larvae floating in the water column and then they will they'll settle out if they are uh, benthic organisms and start growing their small piles. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how often they change burrows. But there have been some studies done in the Atlantic setting down uh, cameras to take photos every so often over the course of a year to see how the animals uh, on the abyssal plains interact with their environment. And a uh, camera set down next, next to a spoonworm burrow will show its activity over time and, and uh, also capture any sea cucumbers that might be making its way across the seafloor. And so it is a very slow process of, you know, creating a burrow uh, and feeding and then eventually moving on to the next location. Another small fish? Yeah. Oh yeah. You can try zooming on them. Yep. What are you, small fish? This is a different fish. Ooh. Oh. What? Oh, oh. Well, it looks like it's only moving the little back F of the tail. Yeah. I think this is a cuskiel. It might be a porogatus. Porogatus uh, always seem to like. Uh, move only the back half of their tail. So they have a very unique swimming technique. Are they always this small or is this one really young? This one might be pretty young, um, but they tend to be some one of the smaller cuskiels. What's the common Thanks. name for that cuskiel? This is the watch of Saporogatus, the common name. Small, far away yeah, thing. That yeah. is the common name? Well. Yeah, cuskiel. I don't know, it could be like Bonk again. The dark wiggly yeah. cuskiel. I don't know. All right. Maybe they have a common name, uh, but if if they do, I don't know it. So Seamount D is where all the all the babies come to hang out. Could the vibrations of the ROV scare away some fish and bring in other fish? It would certainly scare me. I hear it's pretty loud. I don't know about attracting fish, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you, you can see some fish get attracted by the ROV. Usually some of the bigger fish, like the, the rat tails, and sharks seem to be, yeah, a lot of the time. yeah, and the sharks, when we're shallower, um, will come check us out. They get curious. Ooh, nice looking rock here. Let's collect it. Yeah, I want to. That is a sample. Quite a large Trinoid. sample. Go ahead, zoom, please. Sea lily, maybe? Is it micro corals? Um, that is a stocked crinoid. It looks like it has five arms, so a hyocrinity. All sorts of little wee corals on this rock. Yeah, it's like the highest point, so yeah. everything starts living on this one rock. It's not as covered in sediment as some of the other places. But some of these sedimenty places are kind of fun because you're seeing animals that you wouldn't normally see, you know, like like the spoonworm. Spoonworm. Uh, if we could DJ music over the live stream, what would be our choices? Well, we would have to play the... 
Nautilus album. Except Aaron won't let me, so that just means we'll have to remain silent. I think the B fifty twos. I have <laughs> ultimate control. Um I would play eighties. Good choice. Eighties? Yep. I love eighties music. My favorite band just released their first album in 40 years. I'm very excited. What's that? Uh, ABBA, of course. Mm. Oh, yeah, I did see ABBA released a new album. And you can purchase it on cassette tape if you want to. Or Ooh. record. Cassette. I still have a cassette player. Me too. I'm absolutely getting a cassette of that <laughs> album. <laughs> Along with, like, a CD for the car. And now that I have, like, a new car... I just don't have a CD player or a cassette no. player, yeah. So, you have to get the digital. upside, it's less likely that my car will break fish. down. Another fish. So many fish today. I love it. I love fish. Zoom in on the fish. It's another little juvenile Bridge pesky. Another five zero Aww. meters, one zero zero. Baby. Hi, buddy. So Bye. cute. Is it coming towards us? I hope it's coming back. Okay, fine. We can go for more. Yay. So it could be a Bazazetus, possibly. That's a type of Cuskill. They have blunt noses, sort of rounded heads with small eyes. Another possibility is Aramichthys. Um, also looks very similar, but the males have these really long pectoral fins. There's a couple of them. There's another one in the But the females corner. look just like the Bazazetus. Sure. So it's sort of tricky. So we've got a bio. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot of shrimps. 